Philippines, Southeastern Asia. I continue my educational and, of course, deterrence series on young murderers because of my desire as an educator, as a teacher, to uh, encourage the young people of such uh, issues to seek help <clears throat> from the authorities who can help and even from their peers. Because there are uh, fellow teenagers who have been told <clears throat> to be so-called peer moderators, mediators of disputes, and there are also teenagers who are strong believers in Jesus Christ and who have themselves been able to, able to overcome hatred, unforgiveness, jealousy, anger, and so forth, and murderous fantasies and temptations. And this young man, now he's a middle-aged man, but he was a teenage boy when he murders who were participating in a prayer group. And the tragic, the most tragic fact about this case is that if he had opened up about his issues, <clears throat> being bullied because of his small and slight stature and so forth, and if he had honestly asked the members of that prayer group to pray for him, and if, if he had honestly sought Jesus Christ as his personal savior, this murderous rampage never would have happened. <clears throat> okay. So Michael Carneal, he was born in 1983, and on December the 1st, 1997, he perpetrated the Heath High School shooting in West pa Paducah, Kentucky, United States. That day was a Monday. He opened a fire on a group of praying students, killing three girls and wounding five others. On that morning, he had wrapped a shotgun and a rifle in a blanket and had taken them to school. Tragically, his parents had been oblivious to these plans. He had been able to hide them very skillfully, deviously, passing them off as an art project he was working on. So <clears throat> parents should, because parents definitely do have a right to force their children and should have always have a right to force their children to open any suspicious looking <clears throat> packages or objects and bags. So they should keep a closer uh, look, or they should uh, take a closer look on their children and on what they are wearing. <clears throat> and they should disregard their children's protests that supposedly those parents are trampling on their rights. And the parents should say that as long as you live with us, we tell you what to do, not vice versa. And use their parental authority enough. I'm not uh, blaming Mr. Carneal's parents for his problems, because since he had such a timid and childish personality, uh, he was one of the unlikeliest types of people to go on such a murderous rampage. And I can remember still over two decades later, having read about the murder, either in an issue of Time magazine or newspaper magazine, uh, if I remember correctly, he just lost it, was uh, the comment by, I think, the prayer group's leader, a male student. <clears throat> he also carried a loaded .22 pistol in his backpack. Carneal rode to school with his sister and arrived at approximately 7.45 a.m. When he arrived, he inserted earplugs and took the pistol out of his bag. He fired eight rounds in fast succession at a youth prayer group. Three girls died while hospitalized, and five others were wounded. Benjamin Strong, the prayer group's leader, testified that Carneal dropped the gun of his own accord when he was finished. He placed his pistol on the ground and surrendered to the school principal, Bill Bond, after dropping the gun, Carneal said to Strong, kill me, please, I can't believe I did that. Who are the victims? Nicole Hadley, Jessica James, and Case uh, Steger, or Steger, however it should be pronounced. Nicole Hadley was a 14-year-old freshman, in other words, first-year high school student. She was kept alive until 10 p.m. the evening of the shooting. 
She played in the school band and on the freshman basketball team and was a member of the Heartland Baptist Worship Center and the Heartland Baptist Youth Group. Her family had moved to Paducah from Nebraska in 1996. <coughs> her parents received praise for their decision to donate Nicole's organs, a decision they said their daughter supported. Then U.S. President Bill Clinton cited the family's courageous decision in his proclamation 7083 on National Organ and Tissue Donor Awareness Week <coughs> excuse me, in 1998. <coughs> Jessica James was a 17-year-old senior who died in surgery at Western Baptist Hospital Monday afternoon. <clears throat> Case Steger or Steger was a 15 year old sophomore or second year high school student. She died at Lourdes Hospital in Paducah about 45 minutes after being shot. She played clarinet in the school band, played on the softball team, and was a member of the Agape Club. Agape or Agape in Greek means God's love. She was an honor student, worked at Subway, and attended 12th Street Baptist Church. She was a member of Law Enforcement Explorers Post 111 and hoped to be a police officer. <clears throat> so who were the wounded? Shelley uh, Schaberg, 17, Melissa or Missy Jenkins, 15, Kelly Hard, 16, Holland Holm, 14, <clears throat> and Craig Keane, 15. Because of his small frame and physical weakness, Carnegie was frequently bullied. <clears throat> we just wonder if the teachers took vigorous enough action to protect him. I'm sure that at least most of his teachers tried really to protect him, but apparently that wasn't quite enough, and tragically. He would bring items to schools and sell them in an attempt to make friends. His name was published in a middle school paper gossip column claiming <clears throat> that supposedly he had homosexual feelings for another male student. He was also mocked for that alleged sexual orientation, even though there is no evidence that he ever was a homosexual. He was a B student or B minus student at Heath High School and was also said to be a good student with no discipline problems. There had been warning signs. In the weeks before the incident, <clears throat> So starting sometime in probably October, or at latest November 1997, he stole a .38 handgun from his parents' room and attempted to sell it. A student took the gun, threatening to tell police if Carneal didn't give it to him. The student promised to pay Carneal later, but never did. <coughs> Additionally, he had told students that something big was going to happen on Monday, Tragically, no one took him seriously. In the weeks before the shooting, Carneal stole several firearms, both from his home and a friend's home, maybe as a small framed and physically weak and outwardly shy boy. It was easier for him to sneak into uh, bedrooms and, so, and, and storage rooms. <clears throat> On the afternoon of Thanksgiving Day, and Thanksgiving is celebrated... Um, in the United States. <coughs> I'm sorry. Huh? Something wrong with my throat. Yeah, on the next to last Thursday in November, for business reasons, this is from Wikipedia. So on the afternoon of Thanksgiving Day, so only about one week before the shooting, one or one and a half weeks, uh, Carneal went to a friend's home and broke into the garage, taking four .22 rifles, a .30-30 rifle, a .22 and 12-gauge ammunition and earplugs. 
Later, he also stole a Roger uh, .22 pistol and several .22 magazines. <clears throat> Presumably sometime after Thanksgiving Day, Carney also stole two shotguns from his father's closet and hid them under his bed. And tragically, he was not so either he was never suspected before the actual shooting took place or he was not suspected seriously enough for anyone to issue a complaint to the police <clears throat> and ask that he be arrested. He was sentenced to three concurrent life sentences for three counts of murder and an additional 120 years for five counts of attempted murder and burglary. In early 1999, the parents of three victims represented by Jack Thompson filed a 33 million US dollar lawsuit against two internet pornography sites, several computer companies and makers and distributors of the 1995 film, <clears throat> The Basketball Diaries, featuring, by the way, Leonardo DiCaprio. <clears throat> they claimed that media violence inspired Carneal and therefore should be held responsible. The case was dismissed in 2001. The sixth US Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that it was simply too far a leap from shooting characters on a video screen to shooting people in a classroom or on a hallway. <clears throat> so he was sentenced on December the 16th, 1998, one year after the shooting. After an emotional confrontation with the, his victims, families and friends, Michael Carney of the Kentucky High School student who opened fire on a group of his classmates was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 25 years. <clears throat> so depending on whether he's given, given credit for the year he spent in custody after the murders or not, he will be eligible for parole in either 2022 or 2023. <clears throat> During his sentencing, Carneal did not make a statement and mostly sat with his head down, refusing to face the relatives and classmates of the people he had killed and wounded. <clears throat> the parents of the girls killed during Carneal's shooting spree urged Judge Jeffrey, I'm sorry, Judge, Judge Jeffrey Hines to give Carneal the maximum sentence and said that Carneal had changed their lives forever. We've all been sentenced to a prison sentence to which we have no probation, said Gwen Hadley, whose daughter was killed by Carneal. I urge you, Judge, to do the same to Michael Carneal. <coughs> Kelly Hart, the victim's classmate, said, I don't care if you are sorry. I know you can't get this sentence here, but I would love to see you get the death penalty. However, I would say, would it bring back any of the shooting victims? No. Would it uh, guarantee with 100% certainty that someone like Carneal in the future could not do this? No, because we live in a day and age where it seems that a growing number of people are desperados, desperate people <clears throat> who see no future ahead, who look at the news media with mostly or largely negative news and who decide that their lives are not worth living. And this is not to incite anyone, of course, to do the same. Life is worth living, especially if you follow Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but in any case, these desperados uh, believe the satanic lies that life is not worth living. They have a right to end their own lives. They have a right to decide when and where and how to do it, and they supposedly even have a right to terminate some or several or many other people's physical lives in the process of terminating their own physical life. But these are all lies. Sadly, for example, Mr. Carneal succumbed to these lies, and we should pray that he would have a change of heart so that in case, well, whether he ever is paroled or not, he will be forgiven and will even teach others not to hate, not to kill, not to be unforgiving, but to turn to God. <clears throat> so what if you were called a few names? We never did anything to you. The girls you killed did not deserve to die. Well, that's true enough. They would have been ready to pray for him and probably did. To me, you chose the death penalty for them. 
On October the 5th, 1998, Carneal had pleaded guilty, but mentally ill, to three counts of murder, five counts of attempted murder, and first-degree burglary. At his sentencing, clinical psychologist Dewey Cornell testified that while Carneal showed signs of schizophrenia and paranoia, he still was aware of the sentence he was about to receive. Cornell said that Carneal was tormented by his crimes and was ready to receive the maximum punishment because he believes he deserves punishment. After the shooting, Carneal told investigators <clears throat> that he had seen his car crime portrayed in the film The Basketball Diaries, but in my opinion, this sounds like an excuse. So what? You don't have to act it out. And you should not watch such movies in the first place. In the film, uh, the lead character, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, dreams of shooting a teacher. Carneal falsely remembered that the character shot five students while other students cheered. Carneal said that he felt supposed like he was in a dream when he fired on the group of students. That also sounds like an excuse. And they had uh, just finished an informal prayer session in the hallway. <clears throat> on the day of the shooting, he brought five guns to school after he had wrapped them <clears throat> in a quilt and told his mother they were props for a science experiment. Too bad the mother believed his lies. The guns, a pistol, two rifles, and two shotguns were stolen from a neighbor's garage on Thanksgiving Day. Misconduct charges have been filed against Michael Breen, the attorney for the families of the slain girls, for releasing the results of Carneal's mental evaluations to the press. The reports say Carneal understood the criminality of his behavior, despite claims that he never intended to kill anyone. Carneal is cited, or was cited, saying that he planned to wave the guns around and maybe wound someone, but believed that a .22 caliber bullet wouldn't be fatal. Diane Shetsky, a medical doctor in her forensic evaluation of Carneal, said, It is my opinion that Michael Carneal, although mentally ill, did have an appreciation for the criminality or of the criminality of his behavior and the capacity to restrain himself when he killed three students at his school and injured five others. Judge Hines could offer little consolation to Carneal's victims after the sentencing. He only hoped that they uh, found a bit of comfort in their victim impact statements. Hines said, it is unusual for the court to allow several statements to be read into the court like they were here. I can't imagine the pain <clears throat> that all of you have had to live with and continue to endure every day. God bless you all. Carneal was at the time of the shooting a self-professed atheist. <clears throat> Let's see if there's something else to read. <clears throat> he was only five feet two inches tall, which meant that even many girls of his age were taller than him. He was too small for several sports and couldn't compete with his straight A sister at school. <clears throat> and his home was reported to be the only place where Michael truly felt welcome, loved, and secure. Um, his sister Kelly described Michael as a baby at home who still liked to be cuddled and put to bed at night. His parents, seeing that he lacked the same self-confidence that his popular sister had, gave him extra attention. His father, John, who was an attorney, said a special prayer for his son every night. He also was an extremely sensitive boy by nature and had an unflinching sense of right and wrong. He cried when he saw homeless people and quit the Boy Scouts because he disliked the authority thing, where higher-ranking Scouts had more say in activities. Michael felt as if he were a massive failure, doomed to be different and a nobody. So always he tried to shrink back, try harder, and be nicer. He'd unleash his frustrations on a steel drum kept in the backyard. And in seventh grade, he contemplated suicide because he had no friends for two years. 
A month before the slayings, his mother, and this was one of the warning signs that tragically was ignored. And he also seemed to have a gift for uh, falsely explaining his way out of trouble. <clears throat> Found a stash of kitchen knives under Michael's mattress. Michael said he was collecting them for protection. If someone came in, maybe I could stop them. He also had imaginary fears. Uh, during the fall of 1997, when the shooting occurred, the fall semester anyway, or shootings rather, Michael's grades uh, fell and he began rocking while sitting at the dinner table. And he became obsessed with the movie, The Basketball Diaries. The idea of using a gun to win respect hit a chord with Michael. <clears throat> so a very tragic story and made be a warning to all who because of, for example, their small physical stature and other weaknesses have these grandiose and deluded, utterly false fantasies of winning respect if they kill others.